put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Jakten or The Hunt movie review. Lucas is a 42 year old divorcee. He lost his job at the old school because it was closed down, I think. And he since started working at the kindergarten. He's quite happy with that. He loves children. And one day he gets some very good news about his son. In spite of the, the ex-wife's reluctance to let father and son see each other more than every other weekend, she's finally agreed, mostly because the kid won't stop whining about it, because apparently he's not quite as old as he actually does seem to be anyway. This, however, is... grinds to a halt when a young child tells a story about Lucas. A story that his boss at the kindergarten feels compelled to take seriously. And this allegation of child abuse spreads and yes, the, the title is not only referring to an actual literal hunt, it is small village, they do go hunting. It is also kind of short for witch hunt. Yes, I think it's awkward too. Asking the question, are we better than our forefathers? Can, you know, how, how much damage can a, an accusation as, of, of a crime as vile as sexual abuse, especially of children, cause to a man, whether or not it's true. Now, as this is a story that is completely about the false allegation, and it's made entirely clear, there, there is not a shadow of a doubt in the audience's minds that it is a false allegation. It is, of course, very important to not be pointing fingers at the children or in some way insinuating that, you know, that, that such claims should not be taken seriously. And this isn't really a problem in the film. While there are no... There, there, there are no cases of child abuse in the film that turn out to be true allegations. But the, the there's really no no one is turned into a villain. And no, one's in, no one is entirely a good guy either. You can understand the actions of those who believe the allegations. Um, among them, the, the child's father is Lucas's best friend since childhood, Theo. And at first he doesn't want to believe it. And he doesn't, he doesn't know how to deal with it. To, to hear that maybe his best friend did something like that to his daughter, to, to have to make that choice between who to believe and who to protect in, in a manner of speaking. His best friend since childhood or his beloved daughter. And yeah, it, 
the, the character development is great. You really feel like these are real people. There are a few actions and occurrences that strain credulity, especially near the end. And this may be also worth noting that the movie can at times seem to drag a little. There was a while where I thought that it was ending because it seemed to be really building up to some sort of climax and then a couple of things happened which seemed like they could be a climax, but none of them really were. And I'm... I don't know, I, I have mixed feelings on the ending. It's perhaps a good time to say the movie is 112 minutes, not counting the end credits. Now, to talk some more about the characters. Lucas... I was very pleasantly surprised to find that my initial fears were disproven. He is not a Gary Stu. He does make some bad decisions sometimes. He overreacts. He gets frustrated with these allegations and the, the way he just gets closed out. Again, the small village, everybody knows each other and the way it affects his life this allegation is just devastating. And that, that's really what makes the film work so well, what gives it its power, is that this could happen to anyone, and, you know, it... Again, other than these scenes that, you know, lose credibility, it feels like it, it, it is very realistic. Now, the. I gotta talk about the acting. Mess Mikkelsen as Lucas is phenomenal. I. He, he should definitely win. I, I don't know, an Oscar or some. That was just phenomenal. And he really gets sort of the, the whole thing. You, you see how good he is with the children, and you believe that he loves just, yeah, helping children, ma making them happy. And then once his life takes that turn, you see the frustration, and you see just how it affects him to become so isolated. And, yeah, it's it's truly compelling and his his acting is fantastic a lot of it is in the eyes there's there's this scene where he looks at another character there's not a spoiler and he directly asks do you think i abused that little girl and it's just just the eyes is it's there's just so much is said with just the eyes, so much is communicated. This is actually one of those movies that deaf people will get a lot out of. I'm, I'm sorry, that's a terrible joke. Now, the... Theo, the, the best friend, is played by Thomas Bolt Larsen, and he does an incredible job as well. Like, like I said, he, there is this thing of him, who, who is he to believe? His best friend since childhood or his daughter? How, how do you make, excuse me, how do you make that choice? And, excuse me, the, you really believe his, yeah, his, his actions and the way he, and the, the, the character relationships are very credible. You can very much tell when someone is being affected by what someone else says or does and or someone else's presence and the like and again there really are no bad guys everyone is credible you can even understand the people who I mean, it it's technically a drama but it gets to be really very much like a thriller over the course of it it, it gets extremely tense and just, yeah, this, this rising tension that really it just 
grips you and will not let go. And they did something very smart. They broke some of that up with humor. And it never, it never feels like it takes the threat away. It just feels like it, it just sort of distracts in the right way for a little bit. So it's just so you don't drown in all this tension. And the, 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 the humor is quite good. There's the, Lucas has a dog and it barks every time the word, the, the name of the ex-wife is mentioned. So that's, that's a pretty good gag. And it's a, that's kind of a running gag over the course of the film. There's actually at one point a character who, said, who realizes that the dog still does it and he's like, ah, it's, you know, it still does that. It still knows that. It's, it's pretty funny. And in general, it just, it has some very effective, funny moments that again, really, they do not distract from the tension. Now, the... I, there's at least one more character I definitely have to talk about. I'd, I'd really say everyone does good acting in this. I was very impressed with the child actors. The child who makes the accusation, I don't know the actress's name, but her character name is Clara. Clara. And she's just... She, it's not often that I use the word subtle nuance, that's two words, I can't count. Among the words I don't often use are subtle nuance, yes, about a child actor's performance, but when Clara is asked to repeat the details of the accusation to what appears to be a therapist or some, something along those lines, she has this nervous kind of, I, I guess, facial tick where with her, like her lower lip, I think it is, and it's just phenomenal. You really believe that she feels bad, and that's again, this is not a movie that tells you that children are liars and they're just trying to get adults in trouble. She genuinely feels bad. I, I'm not going to give away exactly how it happens that the, the whole accusation, but it is very credible and clearly afterwards she does feel bad. She didn't realize what she was doing really. And yeah, it just, throughout her performance is so good, so, yeah, and in general, the, the, the kids. That's actually, that's another joke I can kind of give away. There's this thing of the kids like to hide when when he when Lucas shows up at the at the kindergarten. They're like hiding out in the yard and they'll like come and tackle him, you know, in in a funny way, in a charming way. Yeah, I, I don't think it would be charming if they weren't kids, but yeah, they are, so it is. And they they get some humor out of that as well. That's pretty good. The score is quite sparse, and the movie uses silence a lot to great effect. It really makes it feel very, very intimate, and yeah, just you're you're pulled in and pulled along. There's it it never feels manipulating. If if anything changes how we feel, it's the acting and the dialogue. The dialogue is really, really good. There is maybe like one Hollywood line, there's a bit where a character literally says, again, not a spoiler, I believe in the children. And that just, yeah. But other than that, they do tend to be rather good. The movie does a really great job of starting with this very idyllic, setting and environment, just the, like, literally, the very first thing you hear is just, yeah, people having fun. And, and you see all these people together, and they're clearly just, 
you know, like, like I said, small town, everybody knows each other, and they're all together having fun, all these families, you know, the, the guys have something to prove, the women are just looking on, like, uh, and, yeah, the whole thing, it's, it's very, yeah, idyllic, very quaint, and, yeah, so, early on, we have a lot of smiling, happy faces, and then as the movie goes on, there gets to be less and less of that, it gets to be more and more of Lucas isolated, scorned by others, and I don't even think that's the right word. Sometimes my vocabulary is not quite as good as I think it is. Just yeah, the the looks and the 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 treatment he gets, and yeah, it's it's. It's so effective because of that contrast, because we see what he lost, we feel what he lost. One of the, one of the very first scenes is just him drinking with the guys, and clearly he's one of the guys. He's, he doesn't seem... I mean, at first you can barely pick him out among the crowd. He, he's, you know making fun of the, you know, he's being one of the guys, and, yeah, it's, it's so terrifying how it all, yeah. Now, I, I'm a really big fan of Thomas, Thomas Mintabelle, ever since Fiston. The party, I guess, I, I don't remember what it's called in, in English. And more recently, uh, Submarino. And I don't know if Dear Wendy is quite as good as I remember it. It's been a while since I watched it, but I don't know. If it's not as good as I remember it, I at least forgive him for it. And this is the best he's done since Festen. It's... Yeah, and it's, it's actually, I understand, it was an idea that he was approached with, I believe by a psychologist, when he had made Festen, and he, he had so many suggestions, so he put it in a pile for a while, and now he felt this was the right time to do it, and yeah, he, he succeeded in creating a mature, intelligent film that takes a serious look at the allegations and what that does. And again, this is not a movie that is trying to minimize what the, the actual damage done by actual child abuse. It is merely trying to trying to spread the fact that we are looking for it everywhere. We expect it far more than it actually occurs. It is horrible when child abuse happens, sexual or otherwise, but not every single accusation is going to be com completely true. And again, it's not, it's not necessarily like children trying to make trouble for adults. But, yeah, we, we are looking for it everywhere, and sometimes that really destroys the lives of people who have done nothing wrong. And a lot of, you know, it, it, it gets towards a, a lynch mob, lynching, you know, mood in the film, and it has a lot to do with our, our relationship with sex remaining strained and this idea that children are completely innocent. Let me be 100% clear. Obviously, there should not be a sexual relationship between an adult and a child. But when children are curious about it or when they, when they notice that there is a physical difference between boys and girls, these, that is not a problem, that is not a bad thing. What is more likely to, to damage their perception of sexuality is to 
make those out to be very bad things because then they get all kinds of neuroses about sexuality and nudity and yeah, it's not, and, and you know, the children do have, the, the sexuality hasn't completely awakened, awakened yet. And obviously, again, there should not be any sexuality between adults and children, but there is still something there, and that's not a problem. And that is, again, something to, and I, I really appreciate that the movie is mature enough, and again, the, the tendency tend... Yes, tendency tends. We tend to look at... and We tend to take every single allegation completely seriously and kind of assume that the person accused is guilty, and sometimes not accept when they are found not guilty, and of course every charge should be investigated, but if, if there genuinely is not found to be anything, you know, we, yeah, we, we assume that it is everywhere. I think I've made my point on it. Excuse me, I think that, excuse me, pretty well covers everything I wanted to say. But yes, I I recommend this to everyone who can handle it, I guess. Any, anyone who, you know, obviously not children, but if you're mature enough to look into the subject and you feel like you, like it won't completely knock you out to watch yeah, again, this guy made Festen and Submarino. You know what you're in for. Watch it. Definitely watch it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.